Good afternoon and welcome to the to this virtual spring meeting for the Lynchburg district. My name is Kimberly Pryor and I'm with the Virginia Department of Transportation. We will start off today with some brief remarks from Commissioner Britch and others and then open it up for public comment. With that said, I'll turn it over to you, Commissioner, for introductions and comments. Thank you, Kim. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, for those that were expecting Secretary Valentine, uh, she sends her warmest regards and regrets uh, that she cannot be joining us here in the Lynchburg District this evening. She unfortunately had a family commitment that came up at the last minute. And again, uh, she certainly sends her regards in, in missing this important meeting. Uh, it's great to be here in Lynchburg. Uh, we apologize that we aren't there in person. We hope that uh, here in the very near future, we're gonna be able to come back and hold face-to-face uh, -face meetings and then be in person. Uh, the reason why we're here this evening is to solicit your feedback on the fiscal year 2022 through 2027 uh, six-year improvement program. We'll be hearing from a little bit more about the VDOT side of the program here in a minute. Uh, we're all, we'll also be hearing from Director Jennifer Mitchell with the Department of Rail and Public Transportation, uh, CTB member uh, Bert Dodson, and then our district engineer uh, for the Lynchburg District, Chris Winstead, to give an overview of the district and some projects that we have ongoing within the six-year plan. I'd like to give a little bit of a, a overview of what Secretary Valentine would be saying if she were here today and the overview of what's contained in the six year plan. Uh, the special session that the General Assembly convened this summer in 2020, the CTB was afforded great flexibility as a result of the impacts associated with COVID on our revenue stream. Uh, what we, what the General Assembly afforded us, as well as the governor signing into legislation, provided the CTB uh, the flexibility to use every dollar that we have and put it to work for us so that we did not have to delay any of our projects. We did not cancel any project or, or we did not cancel any contracts, nor did we lay off any of our employees, which is paramount and a testament to our fiscal management both at the Department of Transportation and at the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. I should point out that the impacts of the COVID will continue to be felt through fiscal year 22. We do experience about a $680 million uh, lowering of what we would have expected without COVID within the six year plan. Just to give you an overview of, of what you'll hear this evening, is that the draft six-year plan is valued at $21.4 billion. That includes $15.7 billion for VDOT and $5.7 for the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. It contains 3,900 projects. Um, for those that are interested in smart scale and our round four applications, we had a, a, another record set of requests this year's requests were at six point, uh, almost six point three billion, uh, with an available amount to for projects at one point three seven billion. Again, uh, the the needs far outweigh the the amount of funds that are available. We are uh, eligible to be able to move about three hundred ninety seven projects, or I, I should say that we're scoring. Out of those projects, 397 projects will be scored for that 1.37 billion of available funds. Uh, so I'm hopeful that if I can go to the next slide, Jen. I'd like to give you a little bit of, now that you have an overview of the six year plan, a little bit of an overview of uh, of what is occurring within the Virginia Department of Transportation, our safety overview, our response to COVID, and then what we have in our six year program. So on the safety side, I wanna recognize that April is Highway Safety Month in Virginia. It's been designated by Governor Northam as, as an initiative to uh, emphasize the awareness 
for highway safety. Uh, we, VDOT is partnering with a number of our sister agencies to make sure and heighten that awareness of highway safety. And our partners include the Virginia State Police, the Department of Motor Vehicles, the Department of Health, and certainly the Department of Education. Uh, for those that are familiar with VDOT, we also are observing National Work Zone Awareness Week this week. And this year's theme is Drive Safe, Work Safe, and Save Lives. Uh, the theme really emphasizes the part that everyone plays in keeping our workers and our motorists safe in our highway work zones. Uh, you may have had the opportunity to see some of our employees yesterday uh, wearing orange. It, it was our traditional Go Orange Day, and that is to support all of those who work on our roads every day. Now, let me shift gears slightly and mention how VDOT has, uh, what our response to COVID-19 and the global pandemic was. Certainly, last year was a challenge for all of us. Uh, the pandemic has required an unprecedented flexibility and adaptability by the department. And I want to highlight the fact that the staff has responded excellent. Our primary focus going into the pandemic was protecting our employees. We needed to ensure that our workforce was safe. Uh, we had to immediately adjust to that new operating environment which included from our field crews learning how to social distance themselves and wear face coverings to our office workers now embracing teleworking to a broader degree. I'd like to highlight the fact that even with a global pandemic, VDOT has continued to deliver our goods and services. The department has continued to hold virtual public hearings such as this one. We've engaged the public and our stakeholders in a number of forms. More importantly, we've also been able to advertise our projects and award our projects as scheduled. We have not slowed down on hiring our consultants and our contractors to do the design work and our operations. In short, we've been able to keep our foot on the gas pedal to keep our projects moving on time and on budget, as we said. Now, let me shift a little bit further into why we're here this evening and, and speak to you about the highway, the, the VDOT portion of the six year improvement program. The highway construction program in the FY22 through 27 six year improvement plan or program is valued at $15.7 billion. As I said earlier, this includes more than 3,900 projects. Uh, included in those 3,900 projects, we have private, we have funding valued at 4.1 billion being provided by others. This may include our Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, our HR TAC, Hampton Roads Transportation Accountability Commission, and the Central Virginia Transportation Authority, and our P3 or our public private concessionaires all contributing an, uh, the 4.13 billion from our partners. I should note that this program fully implements the new transportation funding formula as it was approved by the General Assembly and the governor in 2020. This year's program is different from last in that we're updating several program areas and those program areas are in the state of good repair for paving, state of good repair for bridges, unpaved roads, our innovation and transportation technology fund, our, and our smart scale program. In addition to these program areas being updated, we've successfully worked with our regional partners to update the regional surface transportation and the congestion mitigation and air quality programming. So we do have two new areas, uh, programs that we are introducing this year into the six year plan that does emanate from the new transportation funding program. And that's inclusive of our interstate operations and enhancement program and the Virginia Highway Safety Improvement Program. 
I encourage each of you tonight to take the opportunity to review what's contained in our six year program. The website address at the bottom of this slide uh, provides you direct access to those, uh, to, to what's contained for the highway side, as well as the transit and, and rail side. With that being said, I'd like to, that concludes my comments, uh, opening comments, as well as the department's comments. And I'll pass this to Jennifer Mitchell, the director of, Jennifer, of the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. Jennifer. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, very happy to be here tonight virtually and to see uh, members of the Lynchburg District um, to tell you a little bit more about what is in uh, DRPT's six-year plan this year. For FY22, we will be allocating over a billion dollars in federal and state funds to rail and public transportation uh, programs. That includes $756 million for public transportation, and that is also inclusive of $20.9 million in our new transit and ridership incentive program, which will be used to help fund low fare and zero fare uh, programs at transit agencies across the state. We also have, are funding 266 million um, in rail allocations. That includes 88 million for our Transforming Rail in Virginia initiative, 83.5 million for our Western Rail initiative. And this includes um, additional service to Roanoke and Lynchburg and an extension to the New River Valley, and 83.5 million for improvement of commuter rail service on VRE's Manassas line. A little bit about our Transforming Rail in Virginia program. Uh, this is a partnership between the Commonwealth, CSX, Amtrak, and VRE. Uh, with this, we'll be doubling state-supported Amtrak service across the state and in VRE service as well, including new evening and weekend service for VRE. We'll be acquiring 384 miles in CSX right-of-way and 223 miles of track. Those are in corridors paralleling I-95, I-64, and I-85. This includes half of CSX's railroad right-of-way between Washington, D.C. and Petersburg, Virginia, all of CSX's right-of-way between Petersburg, Virginia and Ridgeway, North Carolina, and this is an abandoned line known as the S-Line, and then nearly all of CSX's right-of-way um, on an east-west route between Doswell and Clifton Forge, Virginia, known as the Buckingham Branch. That uh, property will now become um, property of the Commonwealth and allow us to significantly expand service uh, throughout the state and also in the future into the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor. We'll be building 37 new mi miles of new track and implementing new infrastructure improvements between Washington and Richmond, including the new True Track Bridge across the Potomac River known as the Long Bridge. Uh, it's a currently a two track bridge that's owned by CSX. Uh, we'll be expanding it by with a new two track bridge that'll be dedicated specifically to passenger and commuter rail. Uh, this bridge is currently one of the biggest bottlenecks on the entire East Coast. Uh, it, it carries all of our passenger and commuter rail service uh, across the state um, into the Northeast Corridor and is literally the connection between the Northeast and High Speed Rail or in Southeast uh, Rail Corridors. We'll also be expanding uh, service on VRE's Manassas Line, uh, subject to a further uh, future agreement with Norfolk Southern. To oversee these, we've instituted a new Virginia Passenger Rail Authority. This was created in um, our transportation omnibus bill last year, and we'll be mobilizing that with staff and transferring uh, passenger rail responsibilities over to that authority in the coming months. On the transit side, uh, this is our third year of uh, programming projects using our merit prioritization process. We're allocating, a, uh, we received applications for a total of 216 million um, for state controlled funding for 592 projects. This is uh, much larger than any of the requests we've received in recent years, but also um, consistent with trends that we had seen in our uh, needs assessment uh, plan that was conducted in 2019. So with this, consistent with CTB's policy, uh, we will be prioritizing state of good repair projects. And that refers to projects um, to replace assets that are at 95% of their useful life. Of the 97% uh, of, of our funding will be going to state of good repair projects. Um, we evaluate a total of 451 projects and are funding 374. We'll also be funding uh, 62 uh, minor enhancement projects out of the 135 applications that we received, and also funding new electric buses uh, through a partnership with the Department of Environmental Quality, utilizing funds from our Volkswagen Mitigation Trust Fund. 
We'll be funding 7.8 million uh, for these vehicles. That'll be a total of 16.7 million uh, that we will have allocated for electric buses across the state. Uh, this year we'll be funding a total of 19 vehicles to Valley Metro in Roanoke, Blacksburg Transit, and the Fairfax County Connector Service. We also provide operating funding to transit agencies, and this has been an unprecedented year for transit agencies as they have struggled to uh, keep up with the additional cost uh, of uh, related to um, cleanliness uh, during the COVID vaccine, providing essential lifeline service, and um, dealing with uh, ridership losses and revenue losses during the pandemic. We are increasing our operating funding by 2% this year, so all of the transit agencies across the state will get some additional operating funding uh, this year. We also allocate funds through what's called our special program. That includes some of the federal COVID relief funds for um, human service operators and also for rural transit agencies. We provide funding for commuter assistance programs, um, which in this year are going to focus on services for uh, returning people to transit. Um, we'll also be funding additional research uh, activities through a demonstration grant that we've received from the Federal Transit Administration, um, which is focused again on ensuring transit agency best practices and public education about transit safety. Here in the Lynchburg District, a few highlights will be allocating $22.5 million in federal, state, and local tr public transportation funding. That includes operating and capital funding for Danville Transit, Farmville Area Bus, the Greater Lynchburg uh, Transit Company, the com and commuter assistance operating grants for the Central Virginia Planning District Commission and their Ride Solution Central Virginia program. We're providing funding for paratransit vehicles through our Human Service Transportation Program for the City of Danville Parks and Recreation and the Central of Virginia Alliance for Community Living. On the rail side, we're funding a rail preservation project with the Buckingham Branch Railroad located in Buckingham County. Uh, that's a four-year project to upgrade structures and replace bridge deck ties. It's going to address 18 bridges along 11 miles of track to ensure that the division can maintain 286,000 load capacity for rail cars. A little bit more about our rail planning highlights statewide. We'll be providing funding for future service development planning, uh, updating our statewide rail plan, and doing a plan for the Commonwealth Corridor, which is a proposed east-west corridor tying together Hampton Roads, Richmond, Charlottesville, and other points west. So with that, I would like to turn it over now to Bert Dotson, the Lynchburg uh, District CTB member. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate the kind comments and you, you and the commissioner. I have a few comments myself. Uh, it's my second round of the smart scale process and a number of people who are on our program tonight know me and I've worked with the last several years and appreciate everybody taking the time to adjust the schedule from six to eight o'clock this afternoon to uh, get everybody online and obviously people from VDOT. Um, so I appreciate the strong collaboration uh, that we enjoy across the Lynchburg district between our smart scale applicants and the VDOT staff who work together very proactively. This collaboration results in prudent candidate projects that strategically benefit our communities across our district. Of the 29 smart scale applicants um, received and screened for scoring during round four on uh, the counties of Amherst, Appomattox, Campbell, Halifax, Nelson, Pennsylvania, and Prince Edward, as well as the cities of Danville and Lynchburg, and the towns of Farmville and South Boston representative. Uh, these applications were valued at approximately $477 million just for the Lynchburg District. <clears throat> the current drafting scenario shows our Lynchburg District anticipating receiving approximately $142 million for nine smart scale projects during round four. Projects range in value from $38.6 million for the Berry Hill Connector Road extension in Pennsylvania County to $2.2 million for a segment improvement on US 60 between Washington Street and Route 29 in Amherst County. Should these allocations be approved, they will be the largest, again, the largest smart scale record uh, around to date in the Lynchburg District. Uh, the draft funding scenario also includes the Commonwealth Transportation Board's submitment of $50 million project for inner city rail service expansion along the US 29 and 81 corridor 
that stretches from four, across four DDOT districts, Northern Virginia, Culpeper, Lynchburg, and Salem districts. In addition, the draft six-year improvement program for Lynchburg district only includes approximately $22.5 million in public transportation spread across Danville, Lynchburg, Farmville, and Ala Vista. The next steps including listening to our citizens uh, through the public meeting process taking place across the Commonwealth in all the nine districts of uh, Commonwealth Transportation Board and up of DDOT. After receiving public input and it's anticipated the CTB, which I'm a member, will consider a consensus scenario at its May meeting next month with anticipated approval of the FY 2020-27 six-year improvement program at its June meeting. <clears throat> so we'll go through the process next month and then we'll make the final decision in June. I again want to thank our local partners for their input and participation. And I would be remiss if I not thank the VDOT team for their efforts in working with our partners to ensure prudent projects are submitted and move forward for funding, design, and eventually construction. Uh, so I'm here to listen. Uh, I learned a long time ago, you got two ears and one mouth. So I will silence my words and turn over to our esteemed Lynchburg District uh, Engineer, uh, Chris Winstead. Chris? Thank you, Mr. Dodson. Thank you for your leadership and for your comments. Um, I, uh, again, I'm Chris Winstead. I work as the uh, Lynchburg District Engineer. I, I should say I get to serve as VDOT's Lynchburg District Engineer. I want to go back briefly to the safety message our, com our commissioner focused upon and just remind folks, you know, our employees and our contractors, um, we, uh, we, we work in an environment where we rely on motorists to, uh, to pay attention. Uh, so keep our people in mind every time you see a work zone. Get rid of the, get rid of the distractions. Our families are counting on all of us to come home safe, drive safe, work safe, save lives. I'd like to share just a little bit of an overview of the district. Our Lynchburg district team serves 10 counties as well as the cities of Danville and Lynchburg. We deliver a strong quality of life for our citizens by caring for approximately 15,000 lane miles of primary and secondary roadways and approximately 2,000 bridges and large culverts. We've been able to successfully continue our role through the pandemic and I'm grateful for each and every one of our dedicated VDOT employees. I'm also grateful for the strong collaborative relationships we have with our localities, TPO, MPO, and planning organizations. This collaboration includes project planning, project administration, secondary six-year improvement programs, as well as letter response and education. We appreciate our local partners. And this evening, I wanna provide some highlights of both our six-year improvement program and our maintenance program. I wanna start briefly with our maintenance program. And first, I want to acknowledge the incredible work of our employees and contractors that they did in response to winter, winter weather this past year. Probably the most memorable experience was the ice storm of Saturday, February 13th, when we were hit with over an inch of ice in some locations. Fortunately, our people were safely able to get all roads back open by nightfall the very next day, with the exception of those involving down power lines. And while the roads were opened up, the remaining tree debris, debris on our right of way was extensive. I'm pleased to share we're just about complete with our storm debris removal efforts just in time for mowing season. We also have invested in our maintenance, in the maintenance of our structures. We have repaired or replaced 23 bridges and culverts with three more currently underway. And due to the hard work of our dedicated staff and contractors, the overall condition of our structures continues to exceed agency goals. Like, like our bridges, the pavement condition of our primary routes and the vast majority of our secondary roads well exceed our agency goals. During this summer's paving season, we will invest approximately $24 million through our paving contracts, resurfacing over 600 lane miles of pavement. Next, I just want to highlight a few things from our Lynchburg District Six-Year Improvement Program. The draft program for Lynchburg District totals over $476 million across the six years. That's up from $329 million in the current six-year program. That's approximately a 44% increase. Highlights include 109 projects total in the program, nearly 142 million in new funding recommended for smart scale round four projects. 
more than 96 million allocated to bridge and paving projects through the State of Good Repair Program. 21 locally administered revenue sharing projects totaling over 32 million. And our employees, our contractors, localities do an amazing job exceeding our agency performance metrics. This fiscal year alone for projects under development, we are at 90% on time and 86% on budget. This fiscal year for projects under construction, we are at 89% on time and 100% on budget. Also wanna highlight some of the projects we've recently completed or have underway that bring improvements in safety and mobility to our citizens. We've completed the new two lane bridge with a sidewalk that reconnects the towns of Alta Vista and Hurt over the Stanton River. This $26 million project was funded largely from our State of Good Repair Program and our contractor English Construction finished the 1400 foot long bridge this past January, well before the May 14th completion date. We also completed the intersection improvements at Berry Hill Road and Route 58 business just west of the city of Danville, which can support upwards of 2,500 new employees at the Southern Virginia mega site at Berry Hill. This was a smart scale funded project. And we currently are improving Route 501 in Halifax County with approximately two miles of new passing lanes, including grading and intersection shoulder improvements. This project with approximately 20 million in smart scale funds is focused upon improving safety and mobility. Ames Brothers is our contractor and they're off to a, a safe, strong start with completion expected in the spring of 2023. Another smart scale project well underway is Lindbrook Road in Campbell County. This $11 million project is being constructed by Kanawha Stone Company with a fixed completion date in September of this year. We also have major bridge replacement work underway on Route 29 near the Lynchburg Airport, where we are replacing the northbound bridge over the Norfolk Southern Railroad. This project's approximately 18 million. It's projected to be complete in May of 2023. In addition, we have major bridge replacement work underway on Route 29 and 460, just east of Campbell Avenue by WC English. This is a $25 million project partially funded by State of Good Repair funds, and it's slated to be complete in July of 2023. We also have smart scale intersection work going on in Buckingham County at Route 60 and Route 56, Ducks Corner, as well as Route 15 and 636. In addition, we have smart scale intersection improvement work underway in Prince Edward County at Route 15 and 692 to install a new roundabout, and we're installing turn lanes at Route 15 and 665. Currently in our six-year improvement program, we have two major projects under development. The city of Lynchburg is developing and delivering the, the 501-221 intersection project with a budget of 38 million and an advertisement date of cons for construction of June, 2022. In addition, the Berry Hill Connector Road, uh, that is a $33.5 million new alignment, approximately two miles in length that will open up additional access to the Southern Virginia mega site it's scheduled for advertisement for construction in September of 2022 and is scheduled to be complete in the spring of 2025. This draft six year improvement program also includes nine fully funded smart scale round four projects. Highlights include a new interchange improvement at Candler's Mountain and the Lynchburg Expressway, estimated at 65.7 million, 30 million of which is proposed to be smart scale funds and the remainder funded through our state of good repair program. In addition, you'll find improvements along the Route 29 corridor in Pennsylvania, Campbell, and Amherst counties, as well an extension of the Berry Hill Connector Road. And you'll find the improvement of intersections using roundabout, roundabouts in three locations, South Boston, the town of Halifax, and the city of Lynchburg. So again, next steps regarding the six-year improvement program. Um, we'll finish up April, May for virtual spring meetings with the goal of listening to our citizens. In May, the CTB will approve the Smart Scale Round 4 consensus scenario, incorporating feedback from these virtual meetings. And then in June, it's anticipated the CTB will adopt the final six-year improvement program. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over, back over to, to Kim Pryor. Kim? Thank you, Chris. Uh, this slide shows the various ways that comments can be submitted. Comments can be submitted online through email or by regular mail. Next slide. Comments can also be accepted today uh, by calling the number shown on the screen, uh, entering the PIN that's shown, 
and callers will be uh, called upon in the order in which they have called in. We ask that you do limit your comments to three minutes, please. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our IT support to begin the public comment period. All right, thank you. We do have several callers on the queue. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, Megan Lucas, if you would like to address the meeting, uh, you have the floor. Oh, Megan, I, I muted you for, for noise in the, in the background. It, it is star six to unmute. There you go. Good evening, members of the Commonwealth Transportation Board, VDOT staff, and other supporters of Virginia transportation, especially transportation here in the greater region. Most of you, if not all of you, are know me. I'm Megan Lucas, CEO and Chief Economic Development Officer for the Lynchburg Regional Business Alliance. We are the voice of our business, our business community from a regional perspective. As this group knows, the Alliance serves many important functions. One of its most crucial ones, though, is the work perform, performed by our LRTAG, the Lynchburg Region Transportation Advocacy Group, a private sector umbrella entity that represents the area's major employers and other critical industries, including small businesses, retailers, higher education institutions, local government entities, and more. Prior to the pandemic, the LRTAG regularly convened in-person work sessions with transportation advocates from across our region. As both CTB and VDOT have done, LRTAG has shifted those meetings to an online platform. We have conducted those meetings as well, all with the purpose and goal of continuing to support the Lynchburg Region's transportation initiative. We are supporting the two, we are supporting two of the most important projects in our region, the Route 29 corridor assessment management and the Candler's Mountain Road interchange improvement projects. As CTB members, VDOT folks and everyone on this virtual call understands the business community in this region relies on a viable, sustainable, and equitable, equitably funded transportation network for the success of their businesses and the strength of this region's overall economy. We appreciate the ongoing support we have received from the Commonwealth, but particularly the strong support in this latest round of funding. Our regional coalition is unified in its continued support for the project submitted to you for funding consideration this round. Thank you, thank you so much for being, uh, for, being, for being able to address you today. And thank you as well for the, all the consideration and support that we have received from Bert Dawson, our Commonwealth Transportation Board, VDOT, uh, all of them, the and our, uh, and our transportation priorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Justin, who do we have next? Sure, moving right along. Um, Reed Woodica, you're next in the public call queue, and uh, it is star six to unmute. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, as uh, they said, my name is Reed Woodica. I'm the interim city manager at the city of Lynchburg, and I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak uh, to you on in advocacy for two smart scale projects within the city of Lynchburg. Uh, the first project is uh, the Candler's Mountain Road interchange uh, with the Lynchburg Expressway. This project will construct a new interchange, uh, including a new bridge uh, at the intersection of Canada's Mountain Road and the Lynchburg Expressway. Uh, this project has been identified in two strategically targeted affordable roadway solutions, or STARS studies, uh, for safety. Uh, the requested funds, uh, in addition to proposed VDOT State of Good Repair funds uh, for the bridge, uh, makes this an opportune time for the submittal in our preliminary project budget for this $40 million. The second project is the roundabout at Wards Ferry Road and CVCC Campus Drive. Uh, this project will construct a roundabout at the intersection of Wards Ferry Road uh, and CVCC Campus Drive, as well as about 600 feet of sidewalk to tie into the sidewalk uh, inside the CVCC campus. Uh, this, project, uh, this project is also part of the Wards Ferry Road corridor study, uh, which was approved by City Council and is complementary to the Atlanta Avenue turn lane project uh, submitted as a revenue project, a revenue sharing project last year. Uh, the preliminary estimate for that project is $6.5 million. I do want to highlight that both of these projects are of uh, significant regional interest because they are located near CVCC, uh, as well as Liberty University, uh, as well as being near River Ridge Mall and the Wards Road retail shopping hub. Uh, the last thing I want to say is uh, we uh, would also ask that the CTB continue to fund uh, the revenue sharing program in the, in the future. Um, you know, revenue sharing has been 
A in particular has been a, a great benefit to the Lynchburg area uh, to leverage local funding with state funding and to accomplish uh, a lot of smaller but very much needed transportation projects uh, throughout, the, throughout the city and the region. Uh, so VDOT funding ha has made many, many uh, transportation projects in the city and the surrounding area possible that otherwise uh, would not have been funded. Uh, our community has certainly been the beneficiary of this funding for many years and certainly hope that this uh, support will continue well into the future. Uh, these funds provide a critical ability for uh, the critical ability to implement projects that uh, would otherwise not be possible for the city or for the Central Virginia region. Um, I'll finish by saying I want to thank Chris uh, Winstead and his VDOT staff for their cooperation and, and assistance. They are um, always so exceptionally uh, helpful and our relationship uh, that we share with them is outstanding. Uh, so I think uh, you know you should be very proud of the staff that you have um, and the great services they provide. Uh, and finally, certainly, uh, again, it would never be complete without a uh, sincere and heartfelt thanks to Secretary, Secretary Valentine and, and CTB uh, member Bert Dodson as well. You have uh, both been uh, such an incredible, such incredible advocates for Lynchburg and for transportation projects across the state. And I think um, you all have so much to be proud of, and, and the city is certainly thankful uh, to call you both partners. So thank you very much, and I hope everyone has a great evening. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitaker. I uh, on behalf of VDOT, I appreciate the comments back to Chris. I can't agree with you more with that. And I will certainly carry forward those comments uh, back to Secretary Valentine as well. So thank you very much for your comments this evening. Justin? Yes, sir. Next, Next on the uh, public queue, uh, Kenny Craig, if you'd like to address the, the meeting, um, you have the floor. And it is star six to unmute. Good evening. My name is Kenny Craig and I'm the Director of Government Relations for Liberty University. Thank you for the opportunity to comment this evening on a specific project in the Six Year Improvement Program. Liberty University supports the Candler's Mountain Interchange Improvement Project. Our campus is located a, about a mile from this corridor and Liberty has approximately 15,000 residential students we also provide jobs for over 7,000 people in the Lindsberg MSA. In addition, LU hosts thousands of visitors at our campus every year. This corridor included in the Candler's Mountain Interchange Improvement Project is frequently used by Liberty students, employees, and visitors. This project will improve the safety and decrease the congestion along this important corridor. Liberty University supports this project Thank you for thank you for your work, and we thank you for supporting the funding for this project. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you, Mr. Craig, for your comments. For Justin. Next in the public queue, uh, Ada Hunsberger, if you would like to address the meeting, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ada Hunsberger, and I represent the Central Virginia PDC, as well as the Central Virginia Transportation Planning Organization. Thank you for allowing me the chance to speak this evening. I would especially like to thank our CTB member, Mr. Dodson, for representing our region, and our partners at VDOT and DRPT for their ongoing support. There are five projects within the Lynchburg District that we would like to affirm our support for tonight. In Amherst County, there is the Segment Improvement Project on US Route 60. In Campbell County, two projects for safety improvements on Route 29. And two projects in the city of Lynchburg, the Roundabout on Wards Ferry Road and at the CVCC Campus Drive. And lastly, the Candler's Mountain Road Interchange Project. Each of these projects recommended for funding directly contribute to advancing transportation priorities for the region set forth by the TPO's 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan, which was recently adopted in September of 2020. The LRTP prioritizes five regional goals, economic development, safety, mobility and accessibility, community and efficiency. By ensuring the LRTP's goals match those of the smart scale process, we ensure that the submitted projects contribute to local, regional and statewide objectives. In addition, we would also like to express our support for the Commonwealth Transportation Board's project 7198 to provide intercity rail service expansion along US 29 and the I-81 corridor. Our region is committed to expanding public transportation options, and this project would allow 
to more for more rail access for our residents. Thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to express our support for these projects. Thank you very much, Ms. Huntsberg. Uh, look forward to uh, and appreciate the comments regarding the CTB's uh, uh, project as well. Justin, yes, we sir. have one more caller. Um, two more, and we've had an additional join us as well. Next in the um, public queue, uh, Frank Rogers, if you'd like to address the meeting, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Good evening, members of the Transportation Board and staff. Very much appreciate the opportunity to join you. I am Frank Rogers, Campbell County Administrator. On behalf of Chairman Hardy and the Board of Supervisors in Campbell County, wanted to uh, echo and amplify some of the comments you've heard to date and voice our support for the safety improvements in particular in the county on Route 29. Those are the result of a methodical and collaborative process, and we think those will vastly improve transit for our local residents as well as through traffic. We'd also, on behalf of the region, like to voice our support as well for the Candler's Mountain Interchange. Uh, as always, we remain incredibly grateful for the partnership we have with Mr. Winstead and his team at VDOT, and uh, we thank the Transportation Board for your consideration. Thank you. Hope you have a good evening. And, uh, thank you, on Rogers. The... Sorry, go ahead. Going. All right. Yes. Next on the list, we have uh, Robert O'Brien. If you'd like to address the meeting, uh, you have the floor. Mr. O'Brien, it is. There you go. Yep. There we go. Good evening. I'm Robert O'Brien, and I am president of Lynchburg Ready Mix Concrete Company. I am also the chairman of the Lynchburg Regional Transportation Advocacy Group, also known as LRTAG, which Alliance CEO Megan Lucas has already mentioned to you earlier. I would like to thank our local Commonwealth Transportation Board representative, Mr. Bert Dotson. LRTAG truly appreciates all you do for our region as well as thank Chris, Chris Winstead and his VDOT staff. Our group remains grateful for all the work, for all the, for the work you all do to study, vet, and fund transportation projects in both the Commonwealth and our region. We know this is challenging, time-consuming time work. However, it is crucially important and it should not go unrecognized. I'm here to convey LRTAG's strong support for the Lynchburg region's transportation priorities. We view each of these projects as extremely beneficial and do so for a multitude of reasons, but principally because they will improve roadway capacity and safety and are significant long-term economic drivers for the entire region. I would be remiss if I did not allude to two of the most important projects in our region, the Route 29 Corridor Access Management and the Candler's Mountain Road Interchange Improvement. From the business community's perspective, the Commonwealth's investments in these two initiatives stand to make transformative improvements in key areas of one of our region's priority transportation corridors. The dozens of transportation advocates on LRTAG and I realize CTB has tough decisions to make. We know there are thousands of legitimate projects in the Commonwealth and the resources are limited. The process is competitive, to say the least. We understand that completely. As such, we want to thank you for your previous support for the Lynchburg Region submissions. We know this body will give all due consideration to those qualifying projects currently before you, as well as LRTAG's future priorities. Thank you again for your time and consideration. Y'all have a good evening. Okay, um, <clears throat> we have had one caller join us while we've um, had comments going. A uh, new caller with the 434 area code ending in 37. Um, will you introduce yourself and confirm you're looking to make public comment in our meeting today? Yes, uh, I yes. will. Doug Stanley, our county administrator for Prince Edward County, and I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words this evening. Uh, Commissioner Brish, uh, CTB board member Dodson, and VDOT staff. Uh, Prince Edward County has submitted the US 460 East Interchange Improvement Project twice through Smart Scale unsuccessfully. Uh, this project will improve access management and increase capacity into the town of Farmville. Currently, the 460 East Interchange does not provide westbound access from Business 460 
to US 460 or eastbound access from US 460 to business 460. Motorists, including truck traffic, emergency response vehicles, buses, and commuters are forced to perform U-turns while traveling east on 460 to enter the east entrance into the town of Farmville. The county and the Commonwealth Regional Council are working with VDOT staff to find a funding mechanism to move this project forward, but would like to remind the CTB of this urgent need in our rural area and would appreciate any funding assistance that can be provided. In closing, I want to again, uh, like uh, the other speakers before me, thank Chris Winstead and his staff in the district. They're always helpful uh, in helping us meeting our transportation needs. And I want to give a special shout out to our resident engineer, Scott Frederick, and his capable staff. We went through some pretty serious storm damage this February, and staff has is, is, um, put a lot of overtime into getting our roads and shoulders cleaned up. And uh, we're almost out of the woods, so to speak. But uh, we want to appreciate Scott and his staff for their efforts. Thank you for the, again for the opportunity to speak tonight. Right, um, Commander, please uh, remain on the line. I'll, I'll grab some contact information from you. Um, additionally, while that comment was being made, we have another caller that has joined, uh, area code of 434 ending in 86. Will you introduce yourself and confirm you're looking to make public comment today? I'm sorry, did, did you say 86? Yes, sir. Uh, please limit your yeah. comments to three minutes, and if you'd like to address the meeting, uh, you have the floor. I would, I would very much. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Dexter Gillum. I'm the mayor of the town of Halifax. I appreciate the time tonight, and uh, I was calling it to, to endorse the roundabout at, at Highway 360 and 501 as it comes into the town of Halifax. Uh, traffic is, as y'all, I think many on this call know, Highway 501 is runs right through the center of our town mm -hmm. right through by the courthouse and traffic has become and truck traffic has become quite uh, a challenge if you would for our, for our businesses in town and we believe that this roundabout will help with some calming measures and we're certainly appreciative of the fact that uh, you're giving consideration to it i'd also like to to mention the fact that i'm the president of the bank of charlotte county and so uh, i as my speaker and for me, would like to thank everyone at VDOT for everything you did for the folks in Halifax County and in Charlotte County. As you know, we were hit very hard with that ice storm, and uh, the work that y'all did to get things back back flowing is certainly very much appreciated. I thank you for your time tonight, and I thank for thank each and every one of you for everything y'all do uh, for the Commonwealth and for our area of the state. Thank you. All right, and if you'll. Uh, remain on the line. I'll grab some contact information from you um, for the meeting. Um, that is the end of the public call queue. Thank you, Justin. I uh, want to first and foremost thank all of our uh, those in attendance this evening, both from the commenters as well as those that are viewing at home as well. I'd also on a personal level, I'd like to also thank uh, all those commenters that have recognized the hard work for of the men and women of the Lynchburg district. It's certainly I appreciate that as VI commissioner, but I'm sure Chris does too, recognizing that his staff uh, do amazing things every single day. And, and certainly where we shine the greatest is during those times of uh, uh, snow emergencies and winter events. And, and so I, I personally thank you, each and every one of you for uh, those comments. Uh, with that being said, I'd also like to thank each of our speakers this evening, Director Jennifer Mitchell, uh, Commonwealth Transportation Board member, Bert Dotson, and of course, uh, our, our very illustrious uh, district engineer, Chris Winstead. So yes, I, I did say that, Chris. So Thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, we will take your comments back and, and compile those with our other district comments. Uh, for those that did that may not have wanted to call in, please use the other means uh, through email or written form to be able to communicate your comments back to us. Uh, with that being said, I'll adjourn this, e this evening's meetings and have a great night and thank you again for attending. Bye.